Ricky Fowler has just resurged as of late and as I make this video has just won for the first time in four years. Join me as I diagnose his swing changes as of late and showcase how these small subtle changes make the world of difference in his golf swing motion and how you can learn from this and maybe apply some of it to your swing. Please make sure to like and share this video as my goal is to educate as many people as I can to showcase that there is no such thing as a simple fix for your game and if you wish to support me go ahead and sub. I may not promise I'll fix your game but I will try to open your eyes to the golf instruction world. Let's have some fun and learn about the new Ricky Fowler. Good afternoon Lion Golf Academy members and welcome back and happy 4th of July and we have Ricky Fowler on the screen and we're going to do a quick swing analysis of his motions, specifically old motions versus new motions and how this is going to benefit his career and why we're seeing a resurgence of him specifically at the tour level. So let's out of the screen, let's just take this back to that midway point and we can see that club is doing a great job running up that lower plane line but the hands are below the lower plane line and what this causes, it causes the whole upper body to go down and we can see a little bit of loss in his head position and this is stealing ground force so he's really loading down so he can push back up which is something that many of these guys and girls do at this level so it's nothing too concerning but the way it got there might be a little concerning once we see the next part of the motion let's go to the right side of the screen as we get that same position hands will be about where they need to be here we can see those hands are closer to this lower plane line and let's move up a little bit here now he gets that turn versus the one on the left side of the screen we can see now that there is a clear separation between the club head which is above the plane line and the hands which is below the plane line now this is a swing i mean this is this is very typical of some of these tour pros but some people can get away with it they have better timing some people can't obviously ricky has great timing he is on tour but to get a little bit better one on the right we can see a nice little circle right over the club head making those hands disappear like a magic trick we see less shoulder tilt issues as you see on the left side and we're starting to see more rotation the hands are connected everything is more connected here let's keep going back on the next frames so we can see now that club is definitely steep on the way back again very much like a but let's take a look here it's a little bit flatter so already we are keeping things in relation to our little magic zone right here this is that slot that they keep talking about and the slot for me is from the lower plane line to the shoulder tilt line that is a bigger slot to work with and that is the be all end all because if you take a look specifically with them it tends to be 90 degrees so they're working within a 90 degree angle with their slot now obviously it changes based on club length and how you're hitting the golf ball but for drivers you need to get that thing to be 90 degrees you have a flatter plane let's move on back we can see that he's trying to flatten it out by now connecting his hands with his club head and he does a pretty good job look at that club face it's pretty square to his forearm but if you take a look at the position of the hands and arms it is much lower than his shoulder tilt which means his hands are really connected to his body which is hogan-esque now we take a look if we draw a little triangle here we can see the angle of his triangle is pointing right about there so let's go to the top of this swing now we can see look at that arm that arm is up in that secondary plane line it is higher it's more room now let's go ahead and draw the same triangle now we're going to connect the elbows together and we're going to pull that triangle straight down right through the middle and one thing you will notice that even though this one's tucked they, they intersect right about here where they intersect on the right side closer to the golf ball so things are already looking like they're going to be easier to unwind and less manipulation that is the key is how do we use these lines correctly set ourselves correctly so there's less room for deviation and we can just travel efficiently down so let's get silly now let's draw a line straight down okay and we're going to try and figure out how all this works and makes sense for his changes once that motion on the left side, we would look at the hands and arms. Hands and arms work their way straight down for the first good part of that motion. And then they start working their way back up. So his hands meet that plane line right where his spine angle meets his lower plane line. So see, even though he's trying to turn, his arms get trapped. I mean, look at that. They're stuck on his right side. They are trapped. So there's no room to work with. Let's look at the one on the right side. So as he moves back down into it, we can start to see right where they diverge, bloop, right there. So which one is closer now to the original triangle? 
So here it's too far down. So there's a little bit of this motion going up and down too much. He's trapped where now it's all connecting. His lines are starting to connect closer and tighter together, allowing him to create more room on the right side. This is the big key is create more room. You don't want to be Hogan-esque like the one on the left side. And there's a reason why Hogan had to hit golf balls from six in the morning until six at night every day to maintain his swing. It's a very high maintenance swing. So unless you want a high maintenance swing, don't bother with this motion. Now the club matches that plane perfectly. Now if he can somehow hold that, if he can get that club head to ride down that plane while he's doing this, it's fine. But because he doesn't have any room, he can't do that. He has to create the room. So as we drop on the right side, we get the club to the similar position here. And what do we see here now? Where is it pointing? That same divergence. Where is this one pointing? Okay, it's pointing to that same divergence too, but look how it got there. So the green line, which is his plane line now, is falling in between his triangle that he set at the top and his lower plane line here. Look at where it's going. It's falling right through down to the side. Now it, it is only one way momentum can take this. And that club head is gonna fall down because that's momentum. So once he's here, his only option is to turn because he is trapped. So he has to really rotate. But because momentum of him pulling his hands down, this club head is gonna to continue to fall down below. So there goes that turn. Now look at where the club is. It's falling down below. You can see it fall here. Now if take a look at the one on the right side. Where's that club falling down to? So it falls right on that plane. It stays on that plane longer. And yeah, it's slightly below, but it, the toe of the club head is still on that line. Now, if we continue down to impact on the left side of the screen, look at all this manipulation of the hands. The hands now have to create the room and they start moving independently and they finish higher. Their path is more into out. And you can see that extension. Look at how much all this gap work is here. And let's go straight down to impact. We can see, let's draw an impact line now. So that is where his club is at impact versus the right side at impact. Let's go down to impact there. Look at this. Look at this green line. So are you noticing a trend? Can you see the one on the left side? Look at all these plane lines. The one on the right side, look at all these plane lines. It's tighter. And all he's done is change the way he's taking that club work back. Now, it'll be interesting to see if he's changed something in his setup. On the way through, we can see that release. Look at the width between his hands and his hips on the way through here. We don't see that width. It's starting to get narrower. It's still running around his plane. Once we go through all the way, we can see that exit path. Look at the plane line way up over here. And once we see this exit path, look at the plane line here. So everything is tighter. It all has to do with the relation to where things are pointing at that golf ball and how we can set it correctly on our spine and utilize our body work. Now we keep on flowing through. Let's go all the way to the completion. And the completion of the golf swing, in my opinion, is all momentum based. So where do things move? Go to the right side of the screen and where do things end up on the right side? And we can draw this line over here. That's his finish line. Which one matches the plane? Look at the right side. It's perfectly matching that lower plane. Left side, left side here. Look how it's not matching the lower plane line. So I'm gonna ask you a question, pretty simple question. If pitchers can tell a thousand words, which one has less deviation? The one on the left or the one on the right? Look at the width we have on his footwork, very tight here. Look at the way he's receiving that weight. So heels still planted, toe is up in the air. Toes planted, heels planted. So it's a little bit more efficient on the way through. There's gonna be less issues with his left ankle, with his left knee. The swing is gonna survive longer and also give him repetitive results. I know these two pitches look like origami, but I got one more little line to show you. And let's do this one in blue. So what we're gonna do is draw where his elbow runs through his chest. And here his elbow runs through his chest. Which one of those is closer to all his plane work? The one on the left or the one on the right? Pretty obvious here. And I want you to remember which, what this line on the left side represented. I'll make it blue now. And that line at that, remember that's where his club was at the top. So which one is more connected to the body? The one on the left or the one on the right? The one on the right actually goes right through his left hip. The one on the left, his left hip had to move out of that position. So you can see all the manipulation his body had to do. It's very subtle, but if you have a trained eye, you can start to put these together. This is all an educational experience for you. Not to say that we can do this. He is the best, one of the best in the world. And he's gonna be around for quite some time with that right swing. So if you have any bets coming up in Vegas and you wanna put some on Ricky Fowler, his odds might've changed after today's win, but start putting money on him in any major championship. I hope that helps you. Hope you learned something today. If you did, hit that like and subscribe. Share this with your friends and allow me to grow this channel to educate more of us. And one last tip for you, don't listen to any quick 
swing tips. There's no such thing as a quick swing tip. Go work with a golf professional, specifically PGA or LPGA. Have a great fourth and be safe. Fairways and greens. Mm -hmm.